to share Jesus with you. Fantastic song, huh? And uh, I love your sense of humor, Pastor. I really like it. And uh, he remembered my husband. My husband has a beautiful sense of humor as well. And I'm very proud and happy and privileged to be here this morning being part of this big gathering and this beautiful campus. I don't know about you, but I am very happy today. Are you happy? I know you laugh a little bit and your smiles are beautiful, but coming to Baraton for the first time gave me a beautiful opportunity to see and to be with my sisters and my brothers from this part of the world. I'm very proud of the women in West Kenya Union. What they did on Wednesday was uh, in Thursday and yesterday was beautiful. And I'm very glad that we have leaders with vision, leaders with passion, leaders with heart and enthusiasm. I'm very glad to be here with Rosaline, Debbie, Pastor Pelot, and his father. It's like a team that we came together and we have been enjoying your songs, your food, the bread from the bakery, and the, all the things that the wonderful hospitality has been providing for us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Baraton University. 
And I know being here this morning is such a privilege to me as well because I really appreciate it to be where the students are. I know you're here from many parts of this beautiful country of Kenya and all other countries in this division that operates in 11 countries. And I know most of you this morning, you are here because you have been sacrificed so much. You are here because there are people helping you to be here. You are here because there are people praying for you. You are here because you're struggling to get your career and to go out to the world and serve God in one of the places he's telling you to go. I remember my years in college. I'm a pastor daughter, but I, 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 I don't come from a rich family. And I remember every summer, every summer, every summer, going Cavancy. Are you there? Selling books. And then I got married. And both of us, every summer, every summer, till we finish theology, Cavancy. Is that amazing? So whatever you're doing to get your career, to get your, 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 your dream, don't give up. Don't give up. There is always a door open that you can go there and really reach your dream. I'm very, very, very uh, happy to be here as well because wherever I go, if I'm from Brazil or if you're from Kenya, we worship together as a family, right? We are one in Jesus Christ. That's why this morning, being here, with you is such a it's such a joy for me because i am part of the baratons university family this morning and it me gives gives me so much joy i pray this morning that whatever i say to you whatever we share this morning we can take this very seriously because the topic that I chose to talk to you this morning is very meaningful to my own life. And before we pray, just a side note here. I've been married my husband for 36 years. I have two sons. My two sons are pastors. I'm a proud grandmother of three grandchildren. And there was a time in my life, being a pastor daughter, being a pastor wife, that I was doing everything without the assurance of my salvation, without understanding the right picture of God in my life. And also, there was a time in my life that I was in deep, deep discouraging my faith because I tried, and I tried, and I tried to be perfect. When I realized that perfection in the Bible is about love, is about knowing Jesus, how he works with you in a different way, then I found the right picture of God, the assurance of salvation, and the perfection that allows you to be yourself. Father, I pray that you can find you in the scriptures and we can find you now. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, that is a beautiful uh, text that Sister Maloba just read today about Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. Today we go around this text a little bit, and I want you to follow what the text has to do with me 
and with you. So I remember that one of the days in my life that I went to the Bible and I figured out by God's grace that that is a message that is the center, is the core of who we are today. Is the center that encompasses everything that we are waiting for while Jesus is not coming, while we waited for him to come. And I remember I cried that day. I was 30, 31 years old when I found myself in this text. And I found myself again facing the understanding of who God is. And I figured out that in the Bible, if you have a wrong understanding about sin, you will have a wrong understanding about salvation. Did you understand that? Because they are both connected. So if you have a wrong understanding, if you don't understand how sin works in your life, you don't understand how salvation can take over your sin and give you freedom in life. So I remember that I was reading Hebrews chapter 4, and I understand something, not only in Hebrew, that salvation is the center, is the core of everything we believe. And one of the things that I understand that if a salvation, because we all sinners, and I was there trying to be perfect, a sinner later there trying to reach my salvation by my own works, I understood what plenty and wonderful truth. If salvation is not what? Cosmically. If salvation is not what? Universal. It is not salvation. So I'm repeating this. If salvation is not cosmically, if salvation is not universal, is not salvation. Because that is a reality happening right now in heaven. That is a reality that most of people who are here sitting now, they don't know. Salvation is taking place now. Salvation is a reality in the Bible from the beginning to the end. And for many young people today, they come to church every Sabbath and say, salvation is not for me. For many years I thought, salvation is not for Raquel. Till the day I understand, salvation is for all. If salvation is not for all, all of us, all the people around the globe, despite who they are, is not what? Salvation. Salvation is for you. Oh, but I have been sinning for many years. Salvation is for you. Oh, but, oh, but I have a friend who is gay. Salvation is for him. Oh, but I have been stealing for him. Salvation is for you. Oh, but I have been abusing my wife for many years. Salvation is for you as well. Oh, but I have been doing bad things. Salvation is for you. Because by the end of the day, we are all sinners. And we need what? Salvation. So if salvation is not for all, praise God, is not salvation. So if you understand that, we have to understand that it's that reality taking place right now in heaven when God is dealing with the evil in the world. He is eradicating evil in the world. He is doing justice in the world. He is uh, resti giving restitution in the world now. So Jesus is working right now in our salvation. But where? Where? You know, I travel a lot by planes. My life is basically over this almost 20 years is on the plane. 
And when we have someone sit by me, they always ask, I know you're telling me that you love Jesus. Oh, Jesus. So where Jesus now? They always ask this question. Where Jesus now? And this is the reality we need to learn today. Where? Do you know? Where Jesus is doing right now? Where? And we go back to our text this morning. When you go to Hebrews chapter 4, we know that the answer is there. And what is happening there is impacting our life right now in this church, in this moment as we talk. And I read it, for we don't have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in their way, just as we are, but not without sin. So let us approach the throne of grace with confidence that we may receive grace, grace and find grace in time of need. And here is where he is. Jesus Christ, our high priest in the heavenly, what? In the heavenly where? So if the people ask you, where Jesus now? Where salvation is taking place? You take nobody's judgment. Judgment is salvation. Where is taking place? In the heavenly sanctuary right now so i keep saying to you the same thing if a salvation is not for all is not salvation but that is one something else if it, there is no sanctuary there is no salvation can you say this with me if it, there is what no sanctuary there is no salvation because salvation is for all. If it, salvation is not for all, it's not, it's not salvation. Can I, can I hear amen? amen? Because all of us, we are here. I don't know about you, but I, 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 we are all need to know this beautiful truth. That we have a reality taking place now. That is a God in Jesus Christ saving us. Saving us. That's why when you talk about these things, we have to understand that the Jesus, the ministry, the work that Jesus did in the cross, begun in the cross, but is not finished yet. For many evangelical thinking, the way they think is, the, way, the cross is the book end, but not for us. We are still in process. There will be justification, there will be sanctification, there will be redemption. We still have a Jesus Christ in the heavenly sanctuary in the business of giving us what? Salvation. And let me state something like this. Salvation is Jesus' business. It's Jesus doing, not you. The religion in the Bible from the beginning to the end is Jesus doing. Jesus doing, not what you do. And this is amazing because we need to go there and to understand. So our text says that it is important for us to understand what is behind so we can understand and embrace this reality and leave it out. Helen White was very clear that says this message is so important for the church that if you understand what Jesus is doing there in the sanctuary right now as we worship God this morning is the foundation of what? is the foundation of our faith. But you say, Raquel, I never heard about this. You're listening now. That is a God in heaven. Jesus Christ in heaven, in the heavenly sanctuary, working your heart right now. Saying, this is my son. This is my child. This is my daughter. 
and I want her for me. I want them safe right now. This is, is something so beautiful that leads us to appreciate it, what Jesus is doing for us. You know, my hope, your hope, that give us a beautiful a, a, a vision and a beautiful a, a way to see the Bible. Even Revelation that starts with, with this marvelous work of grace, what God is doing in the heavenly sanctuary. But you know, he's there. He is there. And the text says something powerful that I would like to break it down in order for us to embrace this, memorize this, and leave this room with this in our hearts forever. That keep you going without fear, without guilt, without shame. The text says we have a heavenly priest, a high priest, who empathize empathize our weakness have you ever heard about the word empathize the word empathize is very very important because empathy is when you go to someone and you say mm, let me Empathize that when you take her shoes, give me your shoes. Take my shoes. When I take her shoes here, and I, and I put her shoes in mine, I know what she's going through. Empathize when, I, when you come and say, hey, I empathize with you because I suffer with you. I understand your heart. I know what is going on in your mind. I know your suffering. I know your pain. I know your joy. I know your need. I know you, you are. I know. Is that wonderful? When you go to the book of Hebrews, when I was dead in my deep moments, not try, trying to be perfect and find my identity in Christ, the first thing that caught my attention is, I have Jesus Christ, my high priest, who empathizes. He knows what I am. He knows my sins. He knows my fears. He knows me. He knows how much I struggle to pray every night. He knows how much I struggle to be perfect every day. He knows everything about me because he empathizes with what I have in myself that is weak. Hello? Hello? Do you have weakness in your life? The things that you hide from the world that nobody can see and you keep hiding? But Jesus knows he empathizes with you. He knows it. That's why he's in the heavenly sanctuary working in your weakness right now to give you hope to give you uh, to give you a way to just to come to him but the verse says he empathized with our weakness because he knows he came to this world he lived among us he knows what it is but the most beautiful part that i love it he says hey I know your weakness. I empathize with you. He could say, stay there. Work hard. Do whatever you can before come to me. No, the Bible doesn't say this. My Bible, your Bible says, I empathize. We have a high priest in the heavenly sanctuary who empathize with my what I'm not good at it. That thing that you're not good at it. He empathized. And he says, then, I love this. Come, <laughs> approach to the throne of grace with confidence, not with Jesus. With Jesus, my Bible says in Hebrew, 
I empathize with your weakness. So them approach to where? To my throne of grace with confidence. Pastor, come and I, I, I need you here. I went to my Bible in, in uh, <laughs> I went to my Bible in, uh, in Greek. And the word approach is prosimeta. Prosimeta. In Portuguese is aproximese. In English is approach, but in, in Spanish is uh, aproximar. Prosimeta. In Greek, this, Jesus is saying, approach, approach. Prosimeta is, prosimeta is not like this. Say, approach, say to me, Appro approach. <laughs> Do you think that approach is like this? No. Say, approach. This is exactly what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is a personal God. He don't treat people by distance. Even when they're in a bad, bad, bad situation. Jesus is a personal God. When he says in the Bible, in many places, and even in the Gospels, come to me. Come closer and learn from me. Come to me. Here in Hebrew he says, approach prosimeta. But not only that, he says, approach but with confidence. Not the confidence that I have in me, but the confidence that I have in him. I don't have confidence. But when Jesus called to me, every time in my sinful life, even every day, and I listen, approach Raquel, approach. I remember, Raquel, you don't have, you don't have to be like this. Approach what? With confidence. I am your child. You are my creator. You know my weaknesses. And I come to God. And you know another thing, because God is personal. If you go to him, he will treat you like a friend. Like a friend. Because he knows your weakness. He empathizes with you. And he says, a prosimeta, with confidence. Amen. Because you are my child, Amen. with my child. The other thing, thank you. The other thing that I discovered in this text in Greek, the word approach, aproximeta, the idea behind the word in Greek is access. We have access to God. When you see approach to God strong with confidence, it means the door is opened. You have access. I travel around the globe, and many times they say, Raquel, your passport is not okay. You have a visa that needs to go to that door. And I go, and I go to the door, and I say, okay, I need to solve my problem. I need to solve this thing in order for me to go. And when I go there, the door is closed. And I struggle, and then I go to another door. And then I ask to another people, and the door is closed. But now, in this, wherever you go in the Bible, when you see a door in a figurative way, you see that in this text and in many other parts in the scripture, when you go and you go to Jesus, you have access. The door is open. Always. 24-7. That's the beauty of the gospel. If you come. Ha. But this is the problem. Your job is to go. God's job is to fix you. 
but you go because the Bible says oh we have a high priest who empathize with my weakness all the things that I'm not good at it because he says then because I empathize with you come with confidence approach with confidence which means come because you have what access to me you have access to me to my throne of grace that i can offer you mercy and grace for your time of need let me tell you church today you can be in this door anytime that is not a jesus saying come later i'm busy now oh you know what that scene was terrible clean yourself first oh you know what you're sorry go back you're not good enough no the bible says when i come to jesus i have access to his presence i have access to the heavenly sanctuary to the veil that where is the reality of salvation is taking place i have access to jesus christ anytime any day because he's there in the text and is saying that we have grace and mercy to receive for our time of need salvation the center of salvation is about grace it's not about what you do. It's about what he did. You go. Your job is to go to the access. And he will fix you. That was my mistakes over my life. When I understood this message that I have access to Jesus Christ. And one of the things that for many of us keep us not going there. We just say, oh, I, I can do something here to fix it. You're never going to fix yourself. I'm using the word, you never. We can't. It's not your job. It's not my job. But when you go to the access, the power is there. And you're going to see why. There are three things that keep us away from going there. And I pray, Jesus, just let my family today to leave these things behind so they can go there today and have access to your power and grace and you know the first one is shame there are many cultures in the world that shame yourself shame on you and psychologically we leave that shame is different than guilt Guilt is something different. Guilt gives you something that I did something wrong. And I come to Jesus and he's faithful to forgive you. Guilt is that is something wrong with me. Did you understand? And you carry this thing. Guilt, I did something, but that is grace for me. Shame, that is something wrong with me. That's you carry your shame. But you know, the message this morning is the shame block that keep us psychologically harming us to go to Jesus. God can take our shame when you go to the access. We don't need to cover up. You know what I'm saying? not covered up let God deal with our shame don't carry it that is nothing wrong with you give to Jesus that is the guilty block that keep us for many years I live as a guilt person because every time I did oh a sense of guilt is proper is appropriate because we acknowledge something that's not right but carry inappropriate guilt for your entire life is going to kill you. That's what I'm saying. Shame, guilt. 
The only way is to go to the access. And the last one is fear. The three emotions that the devil created at the, at right there after the fall. What is the first one? Shame. The second one? Guilt. And the third one? Fear. And if you allow the enemy to play around those fears, then you never remember, hey, I have a high priest that empathize with what I'm feeling right now and give the fear, the guilt, the shame to the high priest who is taking these feelings from you and fake seal. Fake seal. You know, today we are learning that we have a high priest that we can find what? Mercy and what else? Grace. And I would like to leave it to you where I tied up the message. The invitation today, when you go to Jesus and you get into the heavenly sanctuary with yourself, your fear, your weakness, your shame, your guilt, your sins, you have such a beautiful picture in the reality of the heavenly sanctuary. You have access. You have not only that, you have all of this waiting for you. An invitation that gives you Jesus' presence. Is that wonderful? Number one, when you go to the heavenly sanctuary, when you go to, the, to your high priest, you have his presence. You have his what? Power. You have his goodness. Because we are not good, but he is. We are powerless. He is powerful. You have, what else? His righteousness. You have what? Grace. Ah! And you have what you need. Let me just, before I finish, when you go to the heavenly sanctuary right now, the reality of our salvation is taking place. God is there. Jesus by his eyes as, a, as the high priest dealing with the human heart, dealing with the sins in our lives, the sins that can be forgiven right now. Your job is to go to the access. His job is to fix you. His power, His goodness, His righteousness, and His grace and mercy. Listen, the best way for you to understand this is I was, um, when I go to Mexico, now I need the, your help. They always say, Raquel, you have to come dressed with this color. Because in many countries, women's ministries, this is the official color. So they all dressed, I don't know if it's there, 3,000, 5,000 women with this color. And I was in a big meeting in Mexico, and I told my mom, Mom, I don't have it address. So I called my mom in Brazil. There was someone coming to general conference in Silver Spring, Maryland. And she said, Raquel, don't worry. I send you the dress. And I trust my mom. And my mom prepared the dress, and I received it, but I put it in my bag, and I went to Mexico. When I was, up, I was about to preach, half an hour before, I was dressing up, and my leader from the division says, Raquel, come dressed. You have to come in, in this color here. And I proud of myself. I said, wow, I have a beautiful dress to just use tonight because then, oh, I know the ladies will appreciate it. When I took the dress from the back, ha, 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 the dress was terrible. The leaves were here. The length was here. The dress was a mess. But of course, come here, Debbie, just, just take I was proud of myself. I can fix this dress. 
I can do it. You know when you, you take that proud of yourself that you can fix something. And I took the dress. I took the iron. And I put the iron. And I put the dress in my bed. And I say, ha, ah, are you fixing? And I start putting the, 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 the iron in many places in my dress in order to make the dress even. In order for me to appear fine. Okay, I show what happened. <laughs> when I try to fix my dress. <laughs> <laughs> I put the iron here. It was too hot. Then I try to fix here. I try to fix there. I try to do this. I try to cover it up. And then I looked my dress, everything, and I say, this is it. I cannot fix it. It took a, it took a while for me to realize that I can not fix it. But the beauty came right after. I was so disappointed. And this is exactly what happened when you try to fix yourself. As much as you try, as much as you try, as much as you try, it never ends. But then I call my leader and she said something beautiful. I say, listen, Cecilia, uh, I, I don't have a dress. Uh, I'm totally a mess. And um, it's shame on me. She looked at, uh, at the phone and I was over the phone and she said, don't even say that, Raquel. And she says something this, come as you are. Come as you are, Raquel. I have a new dress for you. Sure enough, now just take it. When I went to the platform before I was coming to preach, she did like this. Come, Debbie. She took my dress. Leave it like this. Exactly what Jesus does. Leave it. She said, you don't need this. Take the new dress. I have a new dress for you. Same color. Exactly what I needed. Perfect dress. And I remember I was doing this there, and tears came to my eyes. <laughs> I knew it. The old Raquel coming, huh? And I knew it. Is that better? Amen. We have a high priest in the heavenly sanctuary Amen. who empathizes. Thank you. With, here. With our weaknesses something that we cannot fix it at all but if I go to Jesus prosimeta every day uh, he just say live in this live it right here because your job is to come his job is to send you out with righteousness not with filter rags anymore. With his presence, with his love, with his goodness, with his power, with his forgiveness. So we can be, live as a, a, in freedom. You are free. This is salvation. Salvation is not something that you do by yourself. You can't. But salvation is when you come to him. Let him do it. What you do every day is a response to his love. But it's not going to save you. But he is the only one. Because salvation comes from the Lord. Alone. 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 Praise God we have this. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And I finish with this last picture. But in our 28 beliefs. This is the definition of salvation. It's very theoretical. It's beautiful, but it's very cognitive. Because salvation has to come to the mind, to the heart. 
And this is, is an infinite love and mercy God made Christ who knew no sin to be seen for us. And then righteousness. And then Jesus is saved and the Lord substitute an example. When he is beautiful, it's good for us to know. But I keep thinking, if Jesus is here today, like Pastor Pelotti sitting here, and I come with all my filthy rags, and I come to him and say, Jesus, what is salvation? Why? Can you tell me? I think Jesus will stood up and he will say, there was a man with two sons. Did you get that? One went far away. But he came back. <laughs> he came to the access back. And there was the father. This is salvation. And you know, when you go to Luke, the most beautiful verse, he says, come, my son. And come, my son, and bring the best what? Robe and cover him up. Because he was lost, but now he was found. He's saved. If his salvation is not for all, is not salvation. If that is not sanctuary, that is not salvation. If his salvation is not cosmically, not universal, is not salvation. That's why today, you and me, as we leave this place, remember. Let's read together. For it's by grace you have been through faith. And this is not from, it, let's repeat, this is not from myself. It is what? Are you ready to embrace the gift? Maybe you're here. Oh, Jesus, I have been away from you for many years. Salvation is for you now. The access is open now. But I have been sinning. My mouth is dirty. My pornography is always here. My words to people are rude. I've been unfair with too many people the way I treat people. I have been trying to be a Pharisee, just pointing people out. Salvation is for you. I have sexual different desires. Salvation is for you. If you want today to say, Lord, I am here with my filled rags, the filled one. I invite the guy who prayed, amazing grace, how sweet thy sound. Today, I want to be the first one. Lord in heaven, <laughs> I'm just a mother, a wife, with so many problems. And, uh, and sometimes I try to fix it. But I would like to be the first one this Sabbath morning to consecrate myself again and to come to the access today and leave everything in the feet of Jesus so he can fix me over and over and over again. Salvation is in Jesus alone. If you want to say, Lord, take me, cleanse me, I just want to go. I just want to go. And you'd like to join me today as we sing Amazing Grace together. I invite you to stand and say, Lord, I'm here. 
I'm here. I want to be in the reality of salvation today. I want to be recipient of this amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet thy I was what? But now I was found. I was blind, but now I see. I pray that we leave this place today embracing this grace and living in a mode of the access life every day that God can fix you because salvation is now heavenly father thank you for your grace thank you for the access the approximator with confidence to your throne of grace to find mercy and grace for the time we need Thank you for saving us. This is not something from ourselves, but a gift that comes from fate, from you alone. I pray for every life who is standing here today, that your touch, your healing grace, your salvation can reach each one of us now. Give us a joyful day in your presence and help us to see Jesus come very soon so we can really see the altar and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.